Hello everybody, this is Michael Filesage checking in here today and I hope you guys are doing fantastic. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can set your tasks that you're going to do, organize your tasks in the SAB. And it's very important to organize what you're going to do because with the SAB, you don't want to be thinking, oh, I forgot to bring this in. Oh, I got to do this. Okay, I'm going to bring it inside the SAB once everything's set up. You don't want to do that because you're going to be bringing in outside contaminants. So you want to avoid that as much as possible and you want your SAB experience to be as smooth as possible, right? So over the years, I found that if you're going to do numerous things in a SAB, you want to make a list and you want to plan everything out so you can go smoothly. For example, today I'm going to be swabbing five plates with this uh, swab and then I'm going to be transferring a clone plate and another plate. I'm just going to be making two transfers basically. And then I'm going to rehydrate the jars. Now I was going to do this next but um, the, the water that I'm gonna do it with is still a little high the temperature so I'm gonna probably do that last. So I've got about five jars that I wanna rehydrate. So I gotta consider that as well. I need to put it in my sab and all that. But we do have 10 jars that I'm gonna be doing agar slurry, liquid inoculant, and agar inoculation with 10 jars. So that's a lot of jars. My sab is big. Everything can fit in there, but I'm just not going to because it's gonna be a little crowded. So I'm going to actually do this, these 10 jars after the transfer and clone plate. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to take the jars out and then I'm going to bring in the jars that I want to rehydrate, which is an ideal, but it's okay because in these cases, what I do is I spray soap water again inside the sap. Remember guys, I see a lot of misunderstanding here. A sap is not supposed to really be a sterile environment. It's, it doesn't work because you're creating a sterile environment, although you are, but it's not through killing germs and you know, whatever in the air. It, it becomes sterile via physics, right? It's not because you're cr literally killing things and making a sterile environment, it's because of the way physics work. So basically you spray the soap water, the soap sticks to all the germs, all the spores in the air, and it's gonna settle down eventually onto the walls and the floor of the sab. That's why you generally want your sab to be moist when you're working in there. So it keeps it there, because if it dries out, then it could, with movement, it could actually go back into the air. That's why I've had a question, people ask me, why, why are the walls of your sab so wet? That's the reason. Although it's okay within a set period of time, but you don't want to go too long, I find, with the walls of the sab not being moist at all. So moving on, the important thing here is that you want to organize everything. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so here, I'm going to be swabbing first, right? So what I do is I prepare a stack of five plates because that's what I'm going to be doing, right? And here are all the plates so far that I've gathered and I've thought about. So all the plates that I want to transfer, all the plates that I want to inoculate, etc, etc, are all in here and they are all in specific order because what I do is I'm going to be putting them inside this sleeve, this agar sleeve, right, before I do it. And as I take them out, I want to, I want everything to be already set for whatever step that I'm going to do. For example, for the swab plate, right? So here's the swab, right? So what I do is the first thing that I'm going to do is the swab plate. So I'm going to put five of the jars on top, okay? And then once I pack this whole thing inside here, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on top, right? So I just take out the swab and then I take out the five plates and that's it, that's all I gotta do. And then I could leave everything else inside here while I work on that, uh, just to make things smoother. And then of course, once I get to the transfer, I've already set everything else up, so I'll show you. So the transfer, clone, plate, so I got two, th two plates I wanna transfer, right? So here, and I make sure I write it just in case it gets mixed up, transfer this. So here's a pink clone, and then I wanna transfer this. So, what, what comes after these two? Well, then we got two empty plates for the transfers themselves, you know? And then what comes next? Then, um, yeah, so we're gonna skip this. So we're gonna go to agar slurry. I'm going to slurry this plate, okay? So after I finish slurrying this plate, then what am I gonna need? I'm gonna transfer a piece of this onto here, a, a fresh new plate basically. So that's what I have there. And then the rest of them, you know, is all for inoculation. So this says LI, liquid inoculant. I'm gonna be doing three plates. I'm gonna be using the liquid inoculant to inoculate, sorry, three jars, not three plates, three jars. Basically, I'm gonna have all those jars prepared once I put everything in the sab. So 
you know, I got, I got a bunch of other stuff. These are all agar inoculations. The ones with nothing written on them are agar inoculations. So I'm gonna be doing two jars each and I got templates each. So in terms, so there's a lot of liquid that's gonna be used today. For one, rehydrate the jars, one of it for agar slurry, uh, and one of it for the liquid inoculant. So I got all of that prepared. And also the swabs, because what I like to do is with, with a swab, I, you never know what you're gonna get. You never know how clean the person was when they made the swabs. You know, you don't know any of that, right? So you don't wanna mess it up because if you, if you inoculate a bunch and all you get is bacteria, you can't reuse that swab to inoculate again, right? So what I like to do is I like to take at least one jar of sterilized water. What I do is when I put it inside the sab, I'll open it up and put the swab in there and just shake it up a bit and then start streaking. So that's the first one. That's the first water that we have. And then this one is for the rehydration. Of course, all of them have been sterilized. So this is for the rehydration of the jars. So how am I gonna do it? Well, I got two syringes, one of which I'm going to use for agar slurry. This has a slightly bigger needle tip. So that's why I use it for agar slurry. This is a little smaller, so this is good for spore syringes and such, and also, you know, for rehydrating jars. So I'm gonna, I, all this water is sterile, so I could, I'll do the first jar with this, but I'll do the rest of them. I'll pull some water from here and then shoot the water into the grain jars that I'd like to rehydrate. And then I have this for the liquid inoculant. So this has less water than the others. Oopsie daisies. <laughs> this has less water than the others, uh, which is perfect because I don't want too much water for the uh, liquid inoculant. This will be enough for three jars. And also this is actually a small, smaller uh, mouth jar, so it's easier to pour. So yeah, that's basically it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I got everything set up here. I'm gonna put everything in the order that I want them to be inside here to prepare. And then I'm gonna clean this table up and you know, blah, 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 prepare the sab and everything, the usual technique, you know, wipe down the walls of the sab with ISO, wipe down the table with ISO, you know, just as a precautionary thing. Put everything that I want inside the sab, put my foil in there, put my scalpels and such in there. You know, just the usual preparation, put my, my cling wrap that I'm gonna be using to wrap the plates in there. And yeah, so that's how I like to prepare in these situations. Remember guys, with sab work, especially, of course, all of like with flow hood and all that, absolutely. But especially with the sab, your preparation is very important. You gotta have a game plan and know how you're gonna go. And of course, it's not always gonna go to plan. You know, I forget a thing here, I forget a thing there. That's fine, right? Just try to minimize that and be mindful of your technique and you should have good success. So if you wanna watch the sab work, I'm gonna live stream it now actually, uh, my sab work. So uh, by the time this video is posted, that live stream will already be done. So I will post a link to the live stream in the chat and you could watch it retrospectively after I finish live streaming. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy. Uh, I hope these sab live streams also help those of you who are working in a sab apprehensive because you know, there, there's a lot of things that are not filled in. Like there's a lot of blanks that haven't been filled in, I feel online in terms of SAB resource, you know, knowledge about the SAB, how to use it properly and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this will, this will help you out. You know, this is from years of experience, what I've picked up here and there and uh, what I found to work well. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Michael File Sage, checking out.